Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi, founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'd like to introduce a very special guest of mine. And his name is Pushprenda Mehta. And he is a writer, storyteller, and mentor, uh, mentor fo focused on providing situations to problems uh, spurred by power of spirituality, karma, observation, perception, and intuition. And he is the author of the best selling book, Observe to a Mask. A hundred small things to know people better and to encourage self observation and self improvement. But before we talk to Push Pendra, I'm just briefly going to um, put a shout out to our sponsors. And our sponsors are Resync today. And Resync has a great product called Resync Recovery. Resync Recovery supports the blood flow and circulation. It's it's the number one nitric oxide booster taken by professional athletes. It helps address inflammation and it positively impacts infl infl inflammation, and it also helps you recover energy. And their other product, Resync Collagen Peptides, it supports circulation and strengthens every layer of the body. It contains ingredients like vitamin C and mineral copper to build collagen and reduces muscle soreness, and it also supports joint mobility and comfort. And I'd like to thank them. And if you are interested in their products, you can find them on resyncproducts.com. Now, Push Pender, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do so everyone gets to know you a little bit better? Uh, thank you so much, Stacey, for, a, for inviting me and for the generous introduction. You know, very little to say after the way you introduced me. <laughs> but if I had to, uh, you know, if I had to sum it up, uh, as you, you know, you mentioned very eloquently, I am a, at heart, I am a content creator, writer, storyteller, uh, and a person who is more focused uh, on solving problems, uh, providing solutions to problems through, through, primarily through content creation, through conversations, to anybody who comes to me for advice, uh, and also uh, trying to, you know, make sure that we we not, don't just have a positive mindset, but a mindset that is focused on self-improvement, self-reflection, which is yes. why, you know, I, I have this, you know, I have these two dictums, which is that to do all of that, it's important to speak less, query more, listen yes. intently, feel deeply. And uh, one of one of my dictums that I mentioned in a novel of mine called The Suitable Inheritor that, uh, you know, um, uh, you have read, I know you've read, uh, and uh, is the fact that, that I believe in it, which is that if you have to live life, try and pursue your passion, work with your intuition, learn as a child and adapt as water, which is what I try and do. And I'm focused in words. And, you know, I also, I en also enjoy the external world. But the idea is to always keep, you know, is to observe yourself, as I've mentioned in the Wall Street Journal best-selling book of mine, Observe to Unmask 100 Small Things to Know People Better, is before you observe other people, the idea is to observe yourself, encourage yes. self-observation, and to know yourself. Once you know yourself, you can know others better. And a lot of times I find, you know, that I think one of society's biggest problems is a majority of society, they focus on other people's flaws instead of focusing on themselves. So it's very easy to avoid ourselves by looking at other people and looking at their flaws and pointing it out and criticizing others. But yet people have a very hard time going within themselves and looking at themselves finding out who they really are as a person and honestly looking at their strengths and their weaknesses and then trying to improve themselves because it's very easy to point the finger at somebody else, but to look at ourselves and to actually fix ourselves and come to terms that we are not perfect individuals and we have specific flaws is a very hard thing, don't you think? Uh, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, I couldn't have summarized this as well as you have. And, you know, if you actually, from what you've just mentioned, you draw out a very important point, which is that most of us have an answer for other people's problems, other people's challenges. Yes. You know, very easy to, you know, offer advice. It takes half a minute to do that. We've not even listened to somebody who's complete that sentence. And in our mind, we've already formed, a, you know, the answer. But yes. if that's the case, why can't we find an answer to our own problems? Yes, there are some problems that are very grave. 
uh, which are very difficult. It could be a health problem. It could be, you know, a psychological issue. It could be a financial issue. Some issues are difficult. You yes. don't get an answer right away. But by and large, a lot of our answers that we are not able to be able to find an answer for when it comes to other people, we are not able to do it with ourselves is because of the inability to change. Because change requires you to, as you rightly mentioned, you have to observe yourself. You have to watch your words, actions, thoughts, beliefs, and habits. You have to be very open to you know addressing and first understanding acknowledging your weaknesses and vulnerabilities and doing something about it if you're not prepared to do that it's very easy to go and offer advice yeah the change is not going to happen in your life and that regardless of which part of the world you live in regardless of the you know your academic uh, pedigree regardless of the organization you work for or even if you're a celebrity you know there are times they just you know people just stop changing so yes you're absolutely right about that and I think a lot of times too, you know, people, people fear change and they don't, mm-hmm. they, they are afraid to change because they don't know what to expect or they're the fear of failure. Don't you think? Absolutely. You know, you, 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 again, you, you're so right. The fact that I see, you know, when I'm talking to you, I see so many little wonderful books behind you. Uh, <laughs> now, whether it's, it's, it's the positive and gratitude journal, empowering yourself, which is one of your latest books, it's epilepsy. The fact is, you took you took that risk of putting it out in the public domain without worrying about the consequences. Right. No book, no movie, no matter how big a bestseller it is, will always be loved by everybody. But the fact that you've put out content, you've put out, you're doing this podcast, you're making so much of a difference with everything that you have in your website. The fact that you are putting it out and you're not afraid of failure or you've learned to mitigate your failure and yet make that difference. So the idea then is to say, okay, I may not be able to take away you know, all the fear and the failure from my life, but let me start mitigating it. Let me start taking the small little steps to put out content in the public domain, to go and start, you know, getting onto the speaking circuit, to having a conversation with somebody informally. You may not be able to offer advice, but you may really be willing to learn. So when right. you start taking those small steps, uh, sometimes people struggle to even have, a, you know, have a have a conversation, leave alone, even make the first remark. But if you challenge yourself and you say, no, I'm going to do this, I'll make those small little steps, then it's easy to go mitigate the risk and get onto the direction of addressing your fears, to make those changes, to observe yourself and to make your improvements and, you know, go ahead and do all the wonderful things that you are doing. Right. You know, I, 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 I love, you know, all the quotes that you had in the book, you really made, you know, you made people really think about the, um, how to look at things from outside of the box instead, you know, it, you know, people, sometimes we are, we are, we come from environments and we are taught a certain way, but then, you know, your, your book gives you a whole different perspective of looking at things and observing people and it not only observing people, but it, it makes you observe your own self because you really have to know who you, before you can get advice and before you can tell people what to do, you really need to understand who you are as a person. And if you are able to give that person constructive advice, you know, then give the person constructive advice if they want it. I, I've come to the conclusion where, absolutely, you know, people don't always, if people don't ask for your help, they necessarily don't want your help. And sometimes even though you mean to do well, it could, it could reverse, I think itself. And sometimes, you know, um, people have to fall in order to get up and it strengthens them. Right, right. So, you know, you said two very, very important things. One is know who you are. And the other is, should you go and offer advice when not asked for? And I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I concur with you that particularly, you know, if you don't know yourself, how can you know someone else? You know, yes. that's a question that's something a lot of people know. So that uh, concept of trying to know yourself more importantly, making sure that you don't offer unsolicited advice. Because somebody asked me the other day, you know, this question that who who, are, who is the person who can offer the best advice? And I said, if a person has not been through a lot in life, mm-hmm. if a person has not seen wounds, if a person has not seen ups and downs in life, you don't want people to suffer. But if there are not certain amount of peaks and valleys in a person's life, then it is the and. One is to have the challenges and the peaks and the ups and downs, but to be able to turn your setbacks into a comeback, to yes. be able to first go and reorient and change your life. Once you can do that, 
those are the people you want to go for advice who have turned their wounds into you know wisdom as oprah winfrey says or who've been able to turn their setbacks into comebacks and then you go to them they'll be able to offer advice to you you know that it will create an impact as opposed to going to somebody for advice or offering advice which you yourself will not follow if i offer advice to you and i will not follow that and i cannot walk the walk and at the same time is stacy you offer advice to me and i'm not willing to accept it but i'm right. willing to offer advice to you then i'm not the person to come to for advice so right. the person so you're right you don't offer unsolicited advice you offer advice you allow people to fall pick themselves up at the same time if people come to you for advice the important thing is to give them the advice that you will follow that where your words and your actions are aligned and that's where again it you know as you rightly said it starts from trying to know who you are observe yourself it's not a boring activity it's a very interesting activity of observing yourself yes. you know observing others is very important but once you know yourself and you're focused on yourself you're focused on your frailties your ego trips your good bad ugly it becomes so much easier to understand to get into people's mind and you know to connect and then if you connect and you understand people's mind the empathy the compassion the advice yes. everything is that much more cogent I find also that people, you know, they go through, people can go through life for decades and they don't know what their true purpose is in life. They don't know who they are as a purpose, you know, person and, you know, what their purpose is in life. Like, what would you suggest to these people who are trying to figure out who they are as a person? What tips would you give them to, to help them build that platform so they can figure out who they are as a person and what direction they should take in life? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, so, so there are some people who pursue their passion. Some people make their passion their purpose. Some people try and find their purpose and then passionately work towards it. And then you said a lot of people, majority of people lack the purpose because somewhere, I think you touched on this, somewhere that we are a product of our upbringing, our environment, our circumstances, our parenting. Yes. And, you know, that's a conversation. If I have with, uh, a conversation with parents, I always tell them one thing. It's important, yes, to tell your children to, you know, become something in life, go get an academic degree, study, take this entrepreneurship, travel, great. Right. Well, mm -hmm. One of the things that you need to instill in your children, I think that starts early, is that they... Uh, they must have a purpose in life. If they've not done that, they need to have a conversation with their kids. Similarly, kids who've not had that conversation with themselves or their parents, uh, it's good to go pursue a material goal. It's good to say, I want to go after fame and recognition, or I want to make a difference. That's great. But the purpose, as you rightly said, is that something that makes you want to not just bring a smile on somebody else's face or, you know, improve your life, but that's something that impels you, that goads you, that inspires you, yes. where that does not feel like work. You will get physically tired when you're, yes. you're driving towards something. So when you look back and you ask yourself that, why is it that, there, you know, you have uh, some of these spiritual tomes like the Bible? like you know the the of other religions the bhagavad gita and the hinduism for example yes. or you have people who you know who we talk about we quote 50 years later 100 years later different luminaries from different fields yes. you know their houses have been turned into museums mm -hmm. we people go to different parts of the world just to visit that yes and you know if if that can happen that means they're spending money to find you know inspiration somewhere else but why not yes. become your own chief change officer your own chief inspiration officer by telling yourself i want to do something which is purposeful while i pursue my material goals while i pursue the fame goals something which you know if i leave this world i i even if i don't leave a legacy which is a very big word to be remembered by <laughs> something that you know that people will remember me by if you know for example i have this test i you know i've been to funerals and i've been to you know ceremonies and i've seen that uh, it, you know, you just look at the image of family or you look at people and you sometimes see that, oh, you went there, people were, it was just a formality. Nobody had tears. People were just wanting to leave. They were looking at the clock and they were like, yeah. okay, you know, and mm -hmm. you tell yourself, it's not, it's not, it's not about the people who attended, but the person who went away, mm -hmm. did that person not connect with people? Did that person not resonate with people? Did that person not give love or did that person not make some difference where people are like looking at the clock? They cannot even take, you know, think about that person for five or 10 or 15 minutes. Right. Say, yes. You know, you don't even have to cry, but you can have that expression that, you know, I'm missing the person. Or even if you are a person who is very old 
and you have been able to use very very even tempered in both you know happiness and desolation yeah. but you know the person is thinks very highly of the other person so that all comes back when you have you you want this particular thought in your mind that i need to lead some sort of a purpose life uh, for life i'll make even if i can make a big difference i can't be martin luther king or a mahatma gandhi or you know abraham lincoln <laughs> But I will want to make a small difference. Could be in my neighbor's life, could be in a yeah. cousin's life, could be in a friend's life. I right. think if you just start off with that, it will become very really easy to get onto a purposeful, purpose-driven, and a passionate, zealful, you know, contributory, yes. self-worthy life. I think I think our the biggest problem with a lot of people, especially in today's society, is people compare themselves to others, or they look on the social media, or they look on on TV, and they see these make believe personas of individuals because they're not like that in real life. They right. just portray it, and you know people think they they try to, especially the younger generation, they try to meet up to these people who they in visualized are a certain way, but it's really feeling self-accomplishment within ourselves that we shouldn't compare ourselves to others, but we should feel fulfilled and, and, and we should do things that make us feel happy and feel, make us feel accomplished. For me, I feel like when I help individuals, that's a feeling of a special accomplishment, a feeling where I get more pleasure that I can't even begin to express in words. And I feel society really needs to not compare themselves to each other, but do things that are going to make their inner self happy. What do you think about that? Again, I, uh, you know, you're so right. I couldn't agree with you more because, you know, the comparison creates discontent. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I'm compared with even a sibling, or uh, a friend, I have no problems, I'm secure, compare me. But right. the point is that at some point in time, what is that comparison doing? When you compare even two kids, you're parenting yes. and you're like, oh, this son, my son, oldest son has this, but my youngest son does not have this, or my daughter has this, but my son does not have that. Yes. So you are sending a message to them that this is it's right to compare. Yeah. Uh, so that means the child will then turn around and say, oh, you're talking about discrimination, equality, inclusion in the corporate world, yes. mm -hmm. uh, but you're not practicing. So each of them are different. They are unique. A cannot be B because if the population of a country is 300 or 350 million, you're talking about three or 350 million different minds. Yes. So so if you, if you don't want to breed insecurity, you don't want discontentment to you know to be a part of the larger community or family and otherwise the important thing is to appreciate people for who they are everybody is unique uh more importantly let's say you want to compare ourselves also yourself then you it's better to compare yourself with yourself you know just as you have corporate earnings corporations have earnings right. they look at the results every quarter why don't you measure your performance each quarter? Yes. The, also, a quarter ago, I knew this much. Now I know more about uh, cybersecurity. Now right. I know more about epilepsy. Now I know more about, you know, Stacey's book on empowering yourself for positivity and gratitude. What I knew a month ago, I should have read this book a month ago. I should have, I should, you know, refer this book to five other people. Right. So when you do that, you are, you are bringing in gratitude, appreciation more than what you did three months ago. Right. Yes. You are sharing that with others. Others. And more importantly, when even if you are comparing yourself with other people, you are growing. So that comparison, if you want to compare, it is healthy to compare, to strive not to become somebody else, but to emulate and take that positive quality of theirs and bring it into your life. If, yes. if you don't know how to make money and Stacey knows how to make money, then go take her advice because that's your vulnerability. If you don't know how to write and you want to write a book, then, you know, you can sit down and say, Stacey, you've been writing, you know, you've been writing an article for Thrive Global, or you've been doing this, for, for example, for HuffPost. How do you do this? How did you write your first article? What are the elements? If you want to speak, Stacey's on the speaking circuit. You know what, Stacey, uh, how did you think of it? How did you muster the courage to do it? So if you want to compare yourself, have those conversations, reach out to the people who are like us, like you and me, who if who seem, if they may seem like, oh, they've made it, well, they made, you know, they, like I, you know, I told you, they took that risk of putting themselves out in the public domain. They said, we are work in progress. We'll always be work in progress. Right. So if you fall, tell yourself you're always work in progress, if somebody compares you with somebody or you compare yourself, then, you know, you will just want to tell yourself, I will compare myself because I have to move from good to great, not for anybody else, to move from being ordinary to extraordinary. I have to get 
better. I have to measure my performance in every quarter. I must improve in, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever you set out for yourself, whatever goals. That I think then will make for healthy comparison, whether it is comparison with others and more importantly, comparing yourself with yourself. And I think one of the uh, main points that you mentioned, you said this earlier in the beginning, you know, people focus on the monetary amount of what, what they're bringing in instead of thinking about their performance and thinking about where they learn, you know, what they learned, you know, six months ago and, and how they have expanded their mind and, and their abilities six months later, you know, in our society, especially in the United States, you know, everything is the dollar bill, the dollar bill, the dollar bill, but that's, that defeats the purpose. That's not what really is important. And if we could get people to really, realize that it's not always about the money it's about self achievement self self worth that i think it, it really matters to build a person's strength courage wisdom hopefulness and and to get them to the point in life where they will fulfill success and they'll fulfill happiness what do you think you're absolutely right because you know uh, if if money is the only goal you have in life then you can make, you'll, you'll obviously at some point in time make a lot of money if you work towards it or you inherit it if you're lucky or you just win the lottery. <laughs> <You're beyond laughs> lottery. Great. Wonderful, you know. Uh, but will once you've got everything and you're driving the most expensive car and you're living in the most expensive house or you adorn the most expensive, you know, let's say watches and bags and uh, the most expensive accoutrements and money can afford, great. But you also need people to enjoy it. Yeah. You know? So if you have the money, you want to go and, you know, parade it around and show it off, you need people to be a part of that. So at the end of the day, you, you would know this better than I do. And I've studied this across the last 15, 20 years yeah. across different parts of the world. When I observe or I've seen or interacted with some of the wealthiest people, you realize that money was a byproduct of them. They pursued excellence. Yes. You know, this conversation that you said, self-improvement, uh, self-reflection, observation, wanting to get better, comparing yourself with luminaries only to get better, to go and meet them, get an appointment uh, and say, you know, can you help me get better in this facet? I don't know this. How did you do this? Uh, hiring maybe a life coach, hiring a mentor, anybody you want to be with, being able to take advice that may seem may seem tough to implement, may seem like, oh, this is this is tough and rude. It's direct on your face. It's not something which is couched with, you know, nice little sweet words. Yes. You take that and then you realize that if you are if you pursue excellence, if you create excellent content, if you speak well, if you and again you get on to that, eventually you become a very good speaker, you become a very good storyteller, you become an excellent marketeer, you become very good at what you do in terms of IT, engineering, cybersecurity, ESG, anything for that matter, right. a good teacher, a professor. And you're thinking you will ingenuity will start kicking in. You'll start thinking, oh, this is the, this is one way I can make money. Perhaps in the one hour that I waste, you know, on social media, barring trying to follow what other people are doing let me take out 20 minutes from that and maybe understand what is investing or let me understand if i can have a side hustle maybe i can open an online store or uh, maybe you know yeah maybe i can you know if i start referring other people's books or maybe as i start getting into the book review business i can charge 25 50 100 for the book review so when you start pursuing excellence wanting to improve yourself money will follow Right. And that money with people, with relationships, with connections, with understanding knowledge and improving your knowledge level. So people, relationships, knowledge and money. If, if, if people are your first focus, relationships and knowledge gathering and trying to improve yourself, is, if these are some of your first objectives, I promise you a lot of money will come your way. And that will then mean a fulfilled monetary life as opposed to just having all the money in the world. But if you right. if somebody, you know, peeks into your personal life, they're like, you know, this is very empty. I don't want to be there. I right. don't want to be I don't want to be leading his life or her life. I've I've noticed that by speaking with many people of, of all different you know, levels of wealth and the people who have been very successful, they did strive for excellence. They didn't strive for the dollar bill and making money. Their their goal, they had one specific goal and it was to reach 
that level and they kept climbing to try to get to that level and it was the determination and the, and the strength they had within themselves that got them to that level and money did follow but it wasn't the money was not the pure objective it was getting to that certain level that brought them there and like you said money came their way but that was not their main goal you know Absolutely, you know, very well said. And I, I uh, you know, in the last 10 years, there is a practice that I do. And I've shared this with a number of people. It's helped a number of people. What happens is we measure our life in terms of years or decades. Right. Oh, I'm going to be working for 30 years, 40 years, 25 years, or 10 years later, I'm going to get there, five years later. Right. But if you tell yourself that I'm going to measure my life uh, 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 with days and with months, not years, so if I've got a working life of I want to work for say 20 years or 25 years or 30 years, 20 times 365 is 7,300 days. <laughs> you know, so if you measure it with days and and or months, then though you then what you will achieve in one year, you will achieve that in six months. Mm -hmm. And if you and then your tendency will be to make every day and every month count. You right. work for two hours, you work for three hours, or you work for eight hours. You and I know people who will go to work or they work remotely or they run their own businesses or they have a job where they can achieve something in four hours that other people not be able to achieve in eight or 10 hours. Right. Why is there that? It's not that they are smarter. It's just that maybe there is more practice there. They're good listeners. They're more attentive, more focused. Yes. So when you look at some of these attributes, focus, uh, attention, self-worth, wanting to improve yourself, money is important, but I have a bigger goal. You know, I needed to start a Google or a Facebook. You know, yes. I know this first six or seven years is going to be slow, but come eighth or the tenth year, it's going to be a jackpot. Right. A lot of these startup, you know, people, a lot of people you and I know have thought about not just startup and anything they've done. You yes. know, your first book may not be the bestseller, but you continue writing. At some point in time, even if it's the people who have not, you know, made their book into a bookseller, a bestseller, but that book has, they made it very big in the speaking circuit because of that right. one book. It's right. the best marketing tool. Or the book has been adapted into a web series for that matter, or right. maybe a movie or a documentary, you right. know, or they've used it to help people in terms of consulting. Yes. So I think at the end of the day, as you rightly said, that if your focus is excellence, if your focus is being the very best, at whatever you can do and continuously are improving, honing, looking at different approaches, then, uh, you know, it will lead in, in you know, in uh, the in a very purposeful and actually a very purposeful, rich and wealthy life in terms of the monetary aspect and the non-monetary aspect. Now, what made you um, want to write Observe to a Mask? What was you, what brought you to that idea that you needed to write this book? What was your main goal and incentive? Uh, to be very honest, um, I have always been, you know, I loved as a kid, I used to love reading about Sherlock Holmes and Nancy Drew and Agatha Christie. Sherlock Holmes was my favorite character. Yeah. I read a lot. I, I always, and then I had a, you know, I was raised in India. My parents were spiritual. So we always looked a little inward. Uh, so we were told, you know, as kids that you must be compassionate, empathy, be good listeners, you know, like I told you, speak less, query more, feel intently, listen deep, listen intently, feel deeply. All that was there. But we were told that keep, keep, watch your words, your beliefs, habits, actions, deeds. Yes. So I think, and when that happened, I don't know, somewhere maybe as a teenager, I started to become conscious and used to observe people. And I, you know, if every time I got into a conversation or I saw other people talking to other people and I used to notice body language very carefully where yes. other people said something nasty or mean or it hurt somebody because of a sarcastic comment. Mm -hmm. Then I tell myself, I don't want to do that. Right. Or there were personal questions. If somebody's had a divorce, you don't want to ask them why they've had a divorce. Yes. And at times, you know, asking somebody if the person has a child may be a tricky thing because, you know, it, it may it may stir up something the other person doesn't want to talk about maybe because they tried having a child, but they, they couldn't have one. Right. So all those, all those things that were, to my mind, vulnerable about other people that I observed that when somebody asked them that question, they didn't like it. I mean, you're not supposed to ask a lady her age or not supposed to ask her <laughs> income. That's fine. You know, but the other thing, so I started to, you know, I started to absorb those things, but I, to be very honest, uh, 
I think, you know, the, there was a question, which I mentioned the introduction of the book, that there was a question that was posted on Quora, the website. Yes. Uh, but what are the small things that can tell you a lot about people? And I posted my response, you know, that yes. these are the seven or eight things that, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to figure out people instantly, this is what you can do. And that, again, is not judgment. It's come from my own observation about yes. myself and my frailties and helps me. That I didn't realize that blew up and over a period it had 1 million views and 7,000 upwards and blah, blah, blah. So when that happened, you know, as a writer, you know that, you know, as a content creator, storyteller, feedback is very important. Yes. Again, inward looking. So I said, this is saying something to me because in March 2019, when I posted that answer a year later, it had touched over a 1 million views and, you know, Quora also promoted that answer. It's going, and then people would reach out to me and say, oh, you've said this, what does this mean? So I said, it was, you know, during COVID when all of us were homebound, I said, you know, everybody's talking about masking and unmasking, you know, maybe there's a way to unmask ourselves right now, which is yeah. not the COVID, but from a long-term perspective. So I thought about writing, uh, you know, elaborating on uh, how you can observe other people, more importantly, observe yourself. Yes. And so that, you know, you know how to find the right partner, you right. know, how to identify uh, the right people to hire for a job. What about the people that you will get into a business partnership and realize later, oh, this was toxic or right. people you want to keep a distance from right. uh, because, you know, you think they're negative and toxic. We each of us run into situations like that. Oh, yeah, so definitely. what are the red flags that you can begin to know very early on when you are dating somebody? And before you take that crucial decision of moving in with a person or getting married to that person, there are some red flags. And if you can identify that. 90% of the relationships that people are in professionally and personally are unhappy. People hate going to work. They don't like yes. the supervisors. They don't like going coming back home. Or they, the stuff that they liked about their spouse, they hate it now. Yes. Some of those things, you can't eliminate everything, but you know the red flags. So then you can work on it to say, and including yourself, so, oh, this is going to be, this will irritate somebody, this won't. So when, so going back to the Quora story, when I realized that it's got over a million views, I said something needs to be done. This is feedback. So it took me around four to six weeks. I said, you know, I'm just going to write a book. I never, honestly, I thought I'd just put out a book where, which will be about hundred small things to know people better. Which, yeah. To help people actually focus on themselves. I said, this is a time where people, the world are, you know, people at that stage look like people are, you know, self-reflection, things are going to change, environment is cleaner. And so I got it, you know, I wrote it in six weeks and then it got published. Uh, and then, you know, it, it did well and got onto podcasts. It became Wall Street Journal, bestseller, blah, blah, blah. More importantly, it it challenges me because... I am always, you know, every time, like you said, you know, there are stuff that you you, you had this book by your bedside and there's some quotes in it. Yeah. More importantly, I have written it. I have to follow it. Right. So I, I, I make sure that whatever I've written that, particularly yes. if parts that are negative, I don't become that. Right. Or I have to constantly tell myself, I've written this, I've told people this now. Am I, or am I giving off the cues of being something like that to somebody else? So right. that's the advantage. So that's why, you know, that, that's a motivation to write this book. It happened. I mean, it's all providence and God's blessings, but it happened because of the question and answer and the feedback and the way it developed on Quora for me to then think about writing this book. And then, you know, everything, uh, you know, everything just happened and fell in, fell in place and started to, uh, you know, take the different directions. So happy about the outcome, yes. I am very happy about the outcome because that book definitely deserved it. I I loved reading it. It was just like, like I told you, even after I finished your book, I had it by my bedside. And at night, I would open it up to certain pages and I would just go through it to my, remind myself of certain things. Because a lot of times, you know, even, you know, you, you would speak to somebody and what they're saying is not what their body language is saying. It's two different things. So, you know, the person is not truly being honest. Why aren't they being honest? It's not maybe because they're a dishonest person. It may be because either they're embarrassed of what, you know, who they are. They may have low self-esteem. They may not be afraid to admit to something. And sometimes we have to be sympathetic with that person. And, you know, and sometimes people are toxic and we do have to Correct. stay away from Absolutely. them too. Absolutely. And you know, you know, you mentioned uh, a very important thing, you know, at the end, which is that sometimes people are toxic. And you see what happens is one of the one of the cardinal objectives of this book is also the fact that, you know, when we're discussing what makes pe a lot of people successful, what makes pe leaders, entrepreneurs, very successful, very rich and or some people leading very meaningful lives. And if you look closely, apart from self-reflection, self-observation, they read a lot, 
they have conversations they work very hard that's a given yes the most one of the most important things is the fact that who are the people you surround yourself with who yeah. are the people you are spending most of your time with mm-hmm. now that's something people a lot of people don't pay attention to even the times you interact with people in your family extended family and friends yes. you had for 20 25 30 years and you know and you sit down and sometimes you realize that you know some of the conversations they're happening they're very different people but the conversations that are happening is small talk around you yes or or it's a fact they're different there's nothing wrong but they don't really fit into your scheme of things so it's okay it's all right to hang out with them on and off occasionally sporadically right. but you know if there's a way to wriggle out of it or make reduce it then the the book observe to unmask helps you identify that so the idea yes. is for example if i had to find into for my life partner conventionally i got married a little late then you know what it is but i told myself i'm not going to get married till uh, you know for me what works is yes. conversation so i said it's it's a, it's something in which in marriages is is it's not given that much of importance to conversation five years down the road six years down the road you know everything about your partner you go to a restaurant you know there's nothing to talk about or you're only talking about your children or you're only talking about that one topic i didn't want that right. so for me that was important so for me i said i need a thinking woman yes. now that definition of thinking woman for me would be different from somebody else Right. So I'm the person who I ended up marrying is a psychologist. So imagine she's a psychologist and I'm engaging in human behavior, but it fell in place because yes. you know we were not we were not being judgmental. We we knew ourselves and we said okay. The idea about also observe to unmask is that if you figure out people and you know you know the red flags and you know this this kind of person will not work for me. So when yes. you form your deep bonds and friendships or any kind of relationships, not just marriage or dating, yes. you know that these are the people you want to hang out with. These should be a part of your inner coterie. And as you get older, you become a little more wise and selective. Yeah. So you. So the idea was also to be make people more aware that this is a good time, and where COVID actually enabled us to spend more time with ourselves and our families. So there were people who had broken relationships, you know, who struggled to be at home, mental right. health issues. Issue. But the idea was that any time you make these choices, you must be conscious of who you are spending your time with, and 100%. to know those people better. This book may help you do that. and i also feel that you know there were times i i had friends that were very nice good-hearted people but they were very negative and when i was with them right. when i talked to them on the phone i felt drained because they sucked the energy out of me if you if that makes sense to you Be, absolutely you know, and you know in that sense they were toxic for me because you know mm-hmm. all they had was negative comments a negative outlook on life and nothing was positive nothing was upbringing and and negative energy really it it reflects and it, and it affects the other individual it is their energy affects our energy because the world is what is i think it's like 90% energy our our world is run by energy oh absolutely right so you know that their, their energy can definitely affect us as a person that's why when you talk about reiki or you talk you know reiki that you know people are like oh yeah yeah but it it does you know yes absolutely when you're around other people you know and i had to let go of those people you know just like you were mentioning and you know you you you're very important energy vibes feelings they're extremely important you may not be able to one may not be able to express it in words or quantify it every time so you know it again feeds into another very important aspect which you know if you look at research or data or studies uh, you know negative energies results in so if i interact with you and you find something negative about me and okay so negativity fine but right. if you say that pushpendra is very negative and you interact with me regularly my energy not only will my energy rub off you and influence you at some point in time until unless you are a very positive person and your positivity can override my negativity right but what happens is that my energy will result in your karma creation yes so for example if you sit down with me and i am indulging in small talk gossiping um all the time or i am indulging in or if you see behavior which is you know full of temper greed yes. or you see, or you see people who are you know constantly complaining criticizing yes. or there is an excessive amount of insecurity in somebody yes so or it could be any other negative trait you know right then what happens is that uh, what happens is 
a little bit of that can come to you. So when that happens, karma is not just cause and effect or as you sow in, so shall you reap or for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Yes. But karma is also a process of strengthening relationships or destroying relationships and careers. So if if you are watchful of your words, habits and actions and who you interact with, and you can feel, like you said, that there is a certain amount of energy or like you said, Reiki, when you're giving energy or you're accepting energy from somebody, you yeah. kind of feel that the person sometimes is in a different space or yeah. this person has a different you know, bandwidth. So the energy leads to conversations. If the conversations are positive, uplifting, it will result in creation of positive karma. If you're yeah. caring, appreciative, full of gratitude, you are trying to help people, right. uh, you are you know, engaged in something which is purposeful, meaningful, fun, but not generally condescending. You yes. know, you can have a sense of humor, but you're not going to be enjoying it in somebody else's cause. So if you right. in positive karma, the positive energy itself will envelop the room. Right. Some people just walk into a room and, you know, they come in with a certain amount of positive energy and vibes. You sit down uh, alongside somebody and you feel that, you know, I need to get up and go away. Yeah. So, so again, so the negative energy feeds into the negative karma, and that creates something I called, and I'm working on my on a book on a, a book of mine on karma, where I have this concept called karma currency, which is about you know like we have cryptocurrency, we have yes. you know, central bank digital currency, we have currency of our own dollars and whatever. We deposit them in our account, and it you know it gives us an interest. It grows even if it doesn't give us an interest. We have it in our account. Right. So similarly, the negative and the positive energies result in the positive and negative karma growing, and then it has its ramifications and consequences. So if I have negative energy and I give it to you without even uttering a word, without even talking to you, but if I have negative feelings for you, I've created a negative karma. And guess so, what? So, yeah. So to so summarize, I, so it's you know it's as if if I have if I you and I are having conversation one on one, whether it's remote or it's personally, and even if I have one iota of negative energy against you, yes. that means that that negative energy is not your fault. I may give that negative energy to you, and you can get up and walk away if you feel it. Right. You may not tell me about it, but if I have that negative energy or the negative vibe of you, I create a negative karma. That means how can I how can I reap a mango if I have sown or planted a thorny acacia tree? So I, I really like the uh, fact that, about um, the book that you're going to be writing about karma. Um, it's very interesting. When do you plan to come out with that book? Uh, I'm working on it. It's a bit of a longer project uh, because it's, so most people in different parts of the world know the meaning of karma, including the U.S. They know what is karma, the positive and the negative karma, but they treat it more of a revenge or a reward. Yes. Or you hear this loose expression, karma is a bitch. Yeah. Or, you know, so, so karma is really nothing. It's a mirror. It mm -hmm. is like, you know, if you play tennis or so you see you hit a ball against uh, the wall, it's going to bounce back. Right. So it's really that, but more importantly, more than knowing the definition of karma, what are the effects and consequences of karma? Yeah, That's very important. And then the questions are, oh, what are the different types of karma? Can some, some karmas can be cleaned or mitigated, okay. positive or negative? Some cannot be, regardless of how enlightened you are, how evolved you are, how good you are. So, so I'm writing about some of those issues uh, and also, you know, in the form of storytelling, back it with data and I mean, not data research and, you know, evidence and also make it into something which is, you know, which should not be like, oh, this is extremely difficult for us to understand. It will be something which is not for everybody. It will be a little, it will be something that people when may, at least people who believe in karma, who uh, most of them who believe in karma, they will be open to it, but it's not that even if they believe in it, that everything they'll accept. But the idea is to get them to start thinking about being aware of it. Because yeah. at the end of the day, everything you pursue in your life, success, money, spirituality, growth, uh, there is an effect that comes out of every effort you put in. Yes. Or every word that you put out into the universe or that every action that or deeds, habits that you are you know, used to, good, bad. So what are the consequences? Because ultimately, even in business or in work and jobs, whatever you do, there is a consequence. Right. So uh, then there's the office politicking. So the karma at your workplace and in your personal space with your relationships. Uh, and then there are some karmas, you know, you see people who are born into with bad health, for example. Mm -hmm. Or you, know, you see people, you, you see parents who've lost their kids very early. Yes. Or you see exchange relationships. 
or the certain amount of you know dysfunctional families or you realize people are narcissistic all sorts of behaviors happen and what is there is there some sort of a relationship with karma and some people say i never did anything wrong in this life why is this happening to me why me right so answers around those questions also have to be given i mean people can accept it or not that's their choice but i thought it's a good time you know to work on it so i'm 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 thinking it'll probably be somewhere in 2024 where it'll get published because this is going to be a little bit of a longer work that's very interesting i i really would like to read that when it comes out that that is very significant i think to many people because people go through situations like that all the time and most people have implanted in their head either good karma or bad karma if you give out good karma good karma will come back to you if you give out bad karma bad karma will come back to you you know it's what you put out in the universe that will come back to you and that's what the main most people have in their in their mindset is is that you know because that's what they're taught in in a lot of especially in the european world absolutely and you know the other facets is that while those are those are there there is merit to it there is importance with all of that but the important thing is to understand with the co- effect the cause and what is the cause it's very easy to say it's, this is the cause and this is the effect uh, this is the action and this is the reaction uh, karma is where science and spirituality converge it's very scientific it's also got the spiritual and religious side to it so i don't want to you know i don't want to say this religion is wrong or that is wrong but i just want to say that something which people the common man everyday people like you and me can follow it's right. not going to be something which is very lofty which requires intellectualizing karma it's something where if a person picks up a book the person can say oh there is food for thought i agree or i disagree but let me just try and the idea is again like i mentioned observe to unmask you can disagree with me you can term it as rubbish but i would request you to try try that facet that you read in um, in observe to unmask you know there's one insight you may not agree right. with just just experiment with it and see if it's right or wrong same thing with karma experiment because yes. with karma the other part is that people think that the positive karma and the negative karma uh, you know if you know if i it's like a balance sheet my profit will equal to my loss my if i do 20 good profit uh, good things in negate my one bad thing well both of them are separate it's not like a balance sheet where liabilities will be equal to assets both of them will have separate consequences right. so that's one part and the other part that does not get highlighted is that and that i think is risky which is that it's all right to say i won't do negative karma it's okay i'll build up my positive karma but when you get on to building your positive karma so if i do something for you then i want to go and announce it to 30 people <laughs> you know and yeah. i want to announce it to 30 people in a room where you are there so i make myself look more important than you right and suddenly you everybody is like oh stacy made it because of what pushed it to help her No yeah. so what i have done is in some way there's the one up manship it will result in my arrogance index going up my ego going up so yes. whenever you are this is just one example whenever you are engaging in a positive karma you don't want the positive to turn into a negative right you want the positive to stay positive and the other part is that is there a way you can mitigate the process of creation of karma which we do every minute every nanosecond you know if i'm if i'm talking to you right now and you ask me a question in my mind am i forming some sort of a judgment against you right. a negative judgment oh what kind of a question is she asked i've made my karma right that somewhere right. I... about me oh pushpendra does not know how to ask questions he does not know how to, how to write and i'll be like how did she say that that's because i did that with you at some point in time right so it, it's nothing but it's going to bounce back so making people aware of the fact that the positive karma you have to be very careful with the positive karmas you create because arrogance ego narcissism anything else actually is far far worse than just negative karma yes very true very true now your book um observe to a mask where can people find that book oh uh, so they can find it in bookstores like barnes and noble they can also find it on amazon and if they want an autograph copy or they want a copy signed they can reach out to me so oh, and awesome. it's available uh, across the world and if they want to download it it's, it's available as an ebook as well and what is your uh, website so everybody knows your website uh, so that's my first and last name which is uh, pushpendra mehta.com 
And you can also find me on Facebook at, uh, you know, uh, Mehta Bush. That's my last name, Mehta, and my short form of my first name, Bush. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter. I mean, um, as, as long as you type my first and last name, a picture will show up. You don't, even if you don't remember any of anything, anything you know, that I mentioned in terms of uh, the, you know, the shortened version of my name. Now, right before we go, I just want one quick question that popped in my head. Intuition. Now, intuition is something that, you know, our body, our heart, our mind, you know, our chakras, we, you know, I always believe the heart rules over the brain you know the heart gives messages to the brain and the brain sends the messages you know to the body you know and and you kind of you know your your intuition i think your body is always telling you and your your is always giving you messages and and giving you answers and direction and i think so many people lack connecting with that intuition you know how do you feel about that you know, you, uh, I, it's one of the best questions to my mind somebody has asked me, and you're so spot on. I'm not saying that because you're in front of me. The <laughs> fact that how do you recognize that the body is telling you something? The, and you rightly said the heart is very powerful. Uh, and because, you know, what happens is that is intuition is really, if you break it down, it's taught from within. It's the, it's the inner voice. Whether you believe in God or you don't, but there is a voice, something tells you, you know, connecting with what you said, the energy, the energy, there is a voice behind that, which is saying something to you. Oh, I'm not well, this is hurting me, or um, I, don't, I didn't like the way this was said. Uh, or maybe, you know, I need to, I need to write this book, or I need to bake the cake, or I need to go get flowers. Something is telling you, I need to do this for somebody or just do this for myself. But what happens is we, we are so caught up in the external world with worry, concerns, negative thoughts, insecurities that we drown ourselves to our inner voice. Yes. So one of the best things to, uh, to enhance your intuitive powers, the starting point is you don't have to, you know, different people say different things. I, I'm a great believer in meditation, yes. But if you don't want to do meditate you don't want to you don't enjoy meditation you want to close your eyes or you don't want to even open with meditating eyes one of the things you can start doing is practicing silence uh, just don't do anything you go for a walk you go for a run you are by yourself just don't have for that 10 15 minutes have a phone on you a book on you a television on you just sit down with yourself for five minutes two minutes three minutes maybe 30 seconds start with 30 seconds a minute two minutes five minutes do nothing. Just observe your thoughts. Let all the crazy thoughts in the world come and go. Don't question them. Don't stop them. The more you do the, you know, everything, the trash that we have within us, the trash we, we throw every weekend for somebody to come and take. Right. right. The trash that we have within us will start coming out. It's yeah. only when the trash comes out, when the positive thoughts, something told you, I was, I remember my, my, my first book, I was taking uh, a train from Michigan to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And and I saw somebody and I, I saw them and they were engaging in a conversation. And something told me that, you know, that the other person is going through something, you know, terrible in their life. You know, obviously I couldn't have brought it up. I didn't know the person. Mm -hmm. And and I something something within that second told me, uh, I, I still remember it was an Amtrak train and something told me that, you know, you need to do something about it. I said, what do I do about it? And something told me, write about it. You know, so I'm not trying to promote my first book, The Game of Life and Relationships, You Are Prepared. But yeah. something told me that I need to write something and write about telling people they need to be prepared. Right. Not for everything, but do something. And uh, somewhere around that journey, I had a conversation with that person much later. And he said, you're right. But that was because I was, you know, at that stage, I was, so in tune with myself, yes, I was in a train, a busy train, but the outside noise, uh, because I was spending some time with myself, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes every time a day with yourself, and the, those 5 or 10 minutes, just make sure you have no other addendum with you, no book, no cell phone, no, uh, no music, no television, just yourself. Just let your thoughts come and go. When you do that, you will become very attentive to the thoughts. You know, sometimes it's spontaneity. 
something will come up and it'll say you need to leave right now you need to call that person right now sometimes it could be a reaction but yeah. over a period you know that was that a reactive thought or was it intuition so and then that intuition could come there are people who when they go to sleep you know they've had a dream for example right you need to do that people will say they they brush it aside some people take that dream seriously they may yeah. not remember everything but they get up and say oh i got that dream right that was a prophecy so it was telling you something again yes. so intuition is not just what happens when we are you know awake it yes. also happens when you were asleep it okay. may be it may also be when you are driving you may or you in the shower you get your best ideas so right. more and more you know with that 5 10 minutes whenever you have a time you'll be whenever you have you could be busy and suddenly because you are calm from within you are serene from within because you are practicing spending some time with yourself yes. and the more you do that and the more you try and be practice being calm and serene and you know like books say forget the small stuff don't lose your temper or you know um, don't get irritated with small things in life the more you focus on the small things in life and let go you and focus on your inner voice the inner voice for this god's voice it'll start guiding you and even if you miss the intuition 10 out of 10 times you miss it five times six times you get it one solution and you get it right yes. it could change your personal and professional life or change somebody else's life so much for the better right oh i so agree with you i so agree with you now you have more than one book out you have several books that you've written can we find that all on your website yeah you could find uh, perhaps not all but you could find the first one which is uh, uh, the game of life and relationships if you are prepared which was also come out in different versions as win the battles of life and relationships you can find uh, observe to unmask 100 small things to know people better you can also find the suitable inheritor which okay. is a novel that i've written uh, which spans chicago peru and india and it's 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 a inspirational spiritual romantic novel and i've been told by people who read it uh, particularly uh, a few people in the media business and more upon in the entertainment business that it needs to be adapted into a hollywood movie a hollywood production company had also got in touch with me to adapt into a movie uh, so so let's see where we go with that but mm-hmm. uh, so there is on if and if you don't want to visit my website it's also available you know on amazon and barnes and noble amazon is i think the place where you get the best price yes mhm Uh, you know it's been a, a pleasure for Sprenda. I I love, you know, um speaking with you and you are a wonderful person with such amazing insight and I thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your views and and sharing your insight with everybody because it was very meaningful and and I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of good insight from what you had to say today. Oh, thank you Stacy. I cannot thank you enough. This has been one of the most interesting conversations I've had because of what you just said. It's been more of heart, you know. Yes. The conversations it's not been rehearsed and it, these I felt your questions is what made the interview interesting. Some of the questions you asked me were downright brilliant, very very mm. thought provoking. So thank I've you. really enjoyed my conversation with you. I follow your work, I follow your website and every content that you put out including, you know, I think you're doing a great uh you know a great service to people you know interviewing people and your podcast and the content you put out and i really hope not because you know this is an opportunity for me to be interviewed i just feel that i hope that you know uh, more and more people uh, read your books uh, visit your website and take advice from you listen to whatever you have to say when you are on your speaking circuit and more importantly also listen to you know your podcast thank you so much it's absolutely an honor and a privilege appreciate it so nice of you oh thank you so much those words mean so much to me and and i you know the, the same goes to you you know i i i've been following your work for years as well and you you have come out with such wonderful pieces and i i love all the stuff that you do and and you really have some life changing um articles and 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 books and and so many things out there that people can really benefit from and your your words of wisdom and your insight is very meaningful and i think it could if people really take the time to read your content and to read your books i think it could be a life changing moment for individuals oh that that's so kind and so nice of you thank you for your generosity and you know, that's so nice of you i uh, had a had a wonderful time and a wonderful conversation Uh same here. Thank you so much for coming on this show and I look forward to speaking with you in the future.
Oh, absolutely. It'll be an honor and delight. Please do. Thank you so much. And hope to see you sometime in person as well. Yes, same here. You have a great day. You too. Have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.